Finally, look at that. It says you've reached 100% of your project generation, data 31 files, 657 lines of code. And guess what? It also have written all the test cases using Cypress. I don't know anything about Cypress. Wow, that's so good. If you are an engineer or somewhat a programmer, now you are able to create complex and really sophisticated application, not just a toy demo, at 100x more speed and 10x more accuracy using AI. Your next world-changing idea, for which you may have had sleepless night, now can blossom into a full-fledged SaaS product and that too and wouldn't just vanish because you didn't have the proper coding skill. Hi, my name is Savajit. You are watching Know Together where I try to simplify latest tech and innovations for your future and your business. Let's get started. Welcome back. In recent past, I have checked many open source AI cool projects such as ADAR, Autogen, GPT Engineer, AutoGPT, etc. etc. However, in my opinion, all these tools have tried to do one-shot programming. But realistically, I don't think AI is so much mature today where you can create a really sophisticated and complex application using one-shot programming. In this regard, I think GitHub Copilot is really awesome if you are a coder. But what if you have a programming mind but you are not a coder? Yet you want to create a really cool SaaS product to bring your idea into life. And this is what I was looking for. And I think finally, I have found an exact AI open source project which can help you bring your idea into life just being a co-pilot. So this video will have four sections in it. In the first section, we'll discuss briefly about the tool GPT Pilot and how it works. Second, I will set up GPT Pilot in my local system and try to build some application using OpenAI's API. Third, I'll discuss various issues that you might find when you're using this co-pilot. And finally, fourth, where I will try to integrate GPT Pilot into our open source, locally hosted large language models so that you can create application for free. So put your glass, have your tea ready, because this video would need your full attention. Let's get started. This is GPT Pilot repository. It's an open source project. I'll provide the link in the description so you can check it out in detail. The creator of GPT Pilot believes that in the near future term, at least until AGI is here, AI cannot create sophisticated and complex app by itself, which I kind of agree as well. So they created the project as a co-pilot to the developer. GPT Pilot codes the app step by step just like a developer would in real life. However, it will take input from the developer as and when it progresses with the application. So GPT Pilot is nothing different than the other projects that I have checked out before. It also works on framework called multi-agent communication. If you're really new to the AI space, you should check out my other video where I have discussed in detail what is an AI agent and how multi-agent architecture works. So basically what happens with GPT Pilot is you as a user or developer or a programmer writes the description of the app that you want to create and then GPT Pilot actually create a bunch of agents and each of these agents is really specialized in doing one thing. This is more sort of your feature team, right? So your product owner will take the description and it is kind of ask more questions for clarifications on what you're actually trying to build and then it will break down that user requirements and after that, that agent will hand over the user requirement to the architect agent Architect agent, which is also an AI agent, will break down the user requirement into tech requirements. Then the architect agent would give it to the DevOps agent. So if you are creating a Node.js app, the DevOps agent knows what all tools that you would need to complete that project. If you're creating a Python app, DevOps agent knows what all Python versions and libraries that you may need to complete the project. So the DevOps agent would actually help you set up the environment. And then it will pass on the task to the tech lead agent. Now the tech lead agent will take the tech requirement and break it down into multiple smaller development tasks. And then it will call the developer agent to do the code development one by one based on the task that it has created. I am so glad that you are still here. It really takes a lot of effort for an introvert like me to speak in front of camera and bring this video. So if you please subscribe to the channel, that would immensely motivate me to put more effort and create more such videos in future. With that said, let's proceed. Start the demo. I have opened my VS Code. Let me create a folder called GPT Pilot Demo. Let's go inside GPT Pilot Demo and now Let's create a Python environment. Let me create the environment. The Python environment is created. Let me activate the Python environment. Now let's copy the GPT Pilot GitHub URL and do a Git clone. Right. So I have GPT Pilot cloned into my local system. Recently, they have also created a VS Code plugin, but I was unable to use the plugin in my Windows system. If any one of you have been able to do that, please let me know how you have done it. And I should be definitely checking that plugin out in this video. I am going to follow their standard instruction. Let's install all the dependency we've installed minus requirement. So the next step is we go to CD pilot. We go inside the pilot and then we have something called env.example. We will copy it, rename it to become just .env. 
this env file you have to specify the api key for the first part of the demo we will use the openai api key so this is the openai endpoint and we are using openai api key so we'll go to the openai and i'm going to create a gpt pilot demo key copy the key and i'll set my openai api key there so before i start let's see how much this is going to cost so at the moment i have 11 dollar left we will see after the creation of the application how much it has costed we go to pilot folder and run this code so basically what it does it creates a gpt pilot database which is a sqlite 3 database and next we need to run python main.pi and run python main.pi right so now it is asking what is the project name in today's fast-paced life we hardly get any chance to capture the essence of our experience and write our personal journal however i feel it's kind of important so i had this idea that i'll create an ai journal where the ai will ask me three random questions and once i respond to them it will kind of save it for the future in the database so that i can come back anytime in the future and have a reflection of my life and the unforgettable experience or not with the experience which i kind of miss nowadays let's name it ai journal okay so now if i go to next step it says describe your app as much as in detail so these are like the sample questions and hit enter now it kind of asks more details so after it has asked all the questions it thinks it needs to know now it is creating the project summary okay so now it has gone to the devops agent and has now planned all, all the technology that i need for me node.js is already installed let's see done so now basically it is uh, kind of planning all the technical requirement and based on the technical requirement it will create the development task now one thing to note here is it will create a folder here called workspace and in this workspace it will create your application code so now the development agent have started working it is doing a lot of coding by itself if you can see now it is dev step one the primary reason why I have selected Node.js is because I don't have any experience in Node.js and I wanted to see if I can still build an app based on Node.js. Okay, so it's asking, should I do an NPM in it? Why? Say yes. So it's initializing my Node.js project in the workspace. Um, then it's saying, can I install this? Say yes. So it's automatically installing all the dependencies that it needs for the project, which is really awesome. Yeah. So if you see here, it has got its first error. Uh, it is asking you whether you want this to be debugged by itself. Say yes, please go ahead and debug. I don't want to do any task. Awesome so it created it's like a thought chain of thought so it thought what needs to be done and it has put its reasoning then it uh, outlined the steps yeah now the cli output is green it's so awesome it's just finding out the error debugging it itself and also taking human input whenever it's required that's good okay so it says now please run node app.js and make sure that you are able to access the website node app.js i can see it's running now on 3000 port so i'll go to my browser i'll do localhost thousand there you go i can see the ai journal application that's been created how awesome is that you can see it has costed me so far around 24 cents let's proceed a bit more it's awesome i don't think any human could ever write code in this speed okay right so it says can i install the sql i said yeah fine go ahead so it has created the table and created all the database schema by itself for the application okay now it is it asked me to test the endpoint okay i think it's not working so tell that to the agent and then hit enter right now you see it's it's now returning the question okay now we'll discuss about few issues that you might get so while this application is being built you can see now it is completely stuck and this might happen when you are building your applications that your provider can go down like the AI API provider and that is where you should use something called proxy in my previous video i have already discussed about light Lightning proxy and how to use it i will attach the link in the description you should be able to see it in your right as well so what i'll do i will stop it here Okay, so now I'm creating my API proxy using LightLLM. So I set the API key for OpenAI provider here. And as an alternative, I have also set up the open router using the same model. Start this LightLLM config config.yaml. So my proxy has started. I will take this API key, go to the env config, and I'll set this API key here. So that means my agent will now connect to my proxy, and then my proxy will actually decide which endpoint to use now if i come back to gpt demo pilot folder where the database is created and this database have now saved all the conversations that it has done previously so open the database which is the gpt pilot sorry, dot tables not slash tables and then do select all from app and if you see this id this is the app id basically and then run python main dot py app underscore id equal to this this should continue the development from the last step it has executed 
if you see that it has now came to the step where it was stuck last time now if you come back to my light llm proxy you will see that this light llm proxy is getting all the requests so another problem that you may face into is while developing the application you might face a lot of issues and that you can uh, definitely resolve by interacting with this agent but that will cost you tokens so if you're using a model like gpt4 and you end up with a lot of error during your application development process that will end up you cost a lot of money for example if you look at my cost at the moment although the application is not anywhere close to ready I have already spent almost like four dollars i am still facing a lot of error that i'm trying to fix with the agent and this is a very common issue that you might face and for that reason you might want to change the agent to talk to a local large language model the third issue that you can face is something like and you see this is this is an error that we have received that it cannot connect with our uh, large language model you might face the same issue even if your provider goes down completely instead of being stuck so in that case if you if i go out of this uh, application and then if i start my uh, proxy again to make sure that the provider is available yeah so my proxy started now but if i now try to resume my task from here yeah, you see it's not starting it's going through the same step and it's uh, kind of doing the same error but how do you resolve this problem the way you can resolve this problem they have an argument called skip until dead step so in this example i know that uh, development step 94 was completed and then only i have exited like this and i'll say skip up to page 94 so this is how you can resume your development with this agent even though you are stuck or something happened your machine crashed in the middle way fourth issue that you can face is you might hit the token limit of openai api provider so in llm proxy you can set alternative provider i can set a usage based routing here that means if openai api is being used heavily it can sometimes send your some of your requests to open router by using the same model and in that way you can actually save yourself from hitting the daily or you know a per minute transaction limit or token limit that every provider currently have okay now let's see how we can integrate this api agent with our locally hosted large language model so for that what i'll do i'll open awsl now wsl is nothing but windows subsystem for linux uh, i have already explained about wsl and how you can run locally hosted large language model in one of my previous video i will definitely attach the link of the video in the description so please check it out and run a locally hosted large language model in your consumer grade hardware in my case olama is already running so what i can do here is i can set another model here once i said that this is connecting in my local host and 11434 port uh, which is where my olama is running so that means when the api agent will call my uh, local light llm proxy which is my AI api proxy with the model name open harness 2.5 mistral then um, the light llm proxy will connect to my locally hosted olama server that means i will incur no cost when i'm actually developing an application now you see the open harness 2.5 model is also loaded so i'll just click this come to my nb file and instead of ppt Bo, now i'm going to use open harness 2.5 mistral model and then it, it, it is going into the next step where it is creating the interface i'm going to pause the video right now and let it complete finally look at that it says you've reached 100 percent of your project generation data 31 files 657 lines of code and guess what you also have written all the test cases using cypress i don't know anything about cypress wow that's so good at some point my locally hosted large language model has failed and it kind of went into loop which i kind of expected as well i had to actually use open router hosted model and i had to pay there almost like uh, another dollar so i almost spent like five dollars but if you have a decent pc with almost like 32 gigabytes of memory you can easily host this model mr ai 8x 7v model and you should be able to create application literally for free okay so let's test the application start the application running on 3000 look at that it looks nice uh, so if i question first it has asked three questions and then i will submit the answers the responses are saved let's revisit journal so i can select the day and select it and now yes it's showing me <clears throat> all the answer that i have given so i will continue to improve this application by integrating ai features and also adding voice ability to the application write in the comments what improvements do you want to see into this application and i will work with ai to improve the application in the future video i'll also try to integrate gpt pilot with google's Gemini pro api because Google Simini Pro gives you 60 query per minute AI API for free. And I think there is a real use case here where I, you can create different full applications using Google Simini API. Write down in the comments if you face any issues or if you have any questions. And please subscribe to the channel. Take care and I will see you in the next one.